social channels, but we'll also leave the mission audio live on our YouTube channel if you'd like to follow along through Payload Deploy. If for some reason we don't launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow at 11.47 a.m. Eastern Time. And as if three back-to-back-to-back -back -back launches wasn't exciting enough, this month also happens to be Pride Month. The Out and Allied Employee Group at SpaceX joined fellow Angelinos to celebrate LA Pride Festival and Parade. LA Pride is an annual celebration in Los Angeles, California, and is known to be one of the largest Pride events in the world. So if you haven't already, we hope you take some time this month to send some extra love to our LGBTQ community. For now, let's take a closer look at our Falcon 9 vehicle and mission at hand. Starlink is a constellation of satellites that can provide high-speed, low-latency internet all over the globe, particularly hey, in remote look. areas where connectivity is limited or completely unavailable. Today, we'll be taking an additional 53 satellites in space in order to grow our constellation and expand our coverage. Those satellites are housed at the top of the rocket in the fairing. The job of the fairing is to protect the Starlink satellites until we reach the vacuum of space. Once in space, we'll separate the fairing halves and attempt to retrieve them once they return to Earth. Below the fairing, we have the second stage. It's the shorter white stage above the black interstage that houses our Merlin vacuum engine. After the first and second stages separate about two and a half minutes into flight, the second stage will ignite its single Merlin vacuum engine and carry the payload to its desired orbit. And below that, we have the largest part of our Falcon 9, which is the first stage, also referred to as the booster. Today's launch will mark the first 13th launch of a Falcon 9 booster. The booster on screen has supported launch missions uh, has supported limit missions such as the Transfer 2 mission, TurkSat 5A, the GPS 3-3, and nine previous Starlink missions. And on screen right now is a view of our drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas, which is using its thrusters to maintain position in the Atlantic Ocean. After liftoff and following separation from the second stage, we'll be attempting to recover our first stage for a record-breaking 13th time. We started the day with about 10% probability of weather violation for liftoff, but so far we are looking green. With that, the rocket, weather, and range are all looking good for an on-time liftoff at 12.09 p.m. Eastern Time. In, in progress. Uh, over the next minute or so, we're gonna see some movement on screen. Uh, we should see the clamp arms that are underneath the fairing halves begin to open up and the structure that is to the left of the Falcon 9 vehicle that you see on screen, uh, the strong back, uh, that will begin to recline away to its pre-launch position about two degrees from the Falcon 9 vehicle. So you can see on screen, right below the fairing house, those clamp arms are indeed opening up. And shortly we should see the strong back begin to recline away from the Falcon 9. The strong back is part of the transporter erector um, also known to, uh, also referred to as the TE. The transport director's job is to roll the rocket out to the pad and raise it to the vertical launch position that you see on screen. And you can see that the strong back is retracting away from Falcon 9. The transport director also routes the, the vehicle's fluids, power, and telemetry umbilicals from the ground systems to the rocket and satellites until Falcon 9 goes on internal power and clears the pad. Stage one lock flow complete. So the strong back is pretty much Set right now in its pre-launch position at uh, right around liftoff time, it will continue to recline away to provide Falcon 9 clearance for liftoff. So this is a great view of historic pad 39A. This is where we launch all of our crew missions from, and this is where we sent people to the moon from. So with T minus two minutes and 25 seconds and counting, things are continuing to look good for today's Starlink mission.
Stage two, lock flow complete. With that call out of stage two, lock flow complete, that is the last of propellant loading on the vehicle. So both first and second stages are full of RP1 and liquid oxygen. Beginning to see some clouds starting to form around Falcon 9. We are continuing to vent gas. That is normal at this uh, stage of the countdown. Those stages are now pressurizing for liftoff. Falcon 9, Starlink LD is go for launch. The launch director has given the final go for launch. All systems are ready. Let's watch as Falcon 9 takes our 53 Starlink satellites into orbit. T minus 30 seconds. T-minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. And lift off. And what the chamber pressure is phenomenal. Vehicle is pitching down range. We are T plus thirty seven seconds into the mission. Falcon Nine has successfully lifted off from Launch Complex thirty nine A carrying our 53 Starlink satellites into space. Moments ago, we began to throttle down the engines on the first stage in preparation for an event known as Max-Q. This is where the vehicle will experience the highest amount of aerodynamic pressures. Falcon 9 is supersonic. Max Q. Awesome. Now that Max Q is behind us, we are throttling the engines back up to full power. Coming up are a series of events happening in quick succession. First is Miko, also known as Main Engine Cutoff. This is where all nine Merlin engines on the first stage will shut off to slow the vehicle down in preparation for the next milestone, which is stage separation. During this event, both the, uh, the first and second stages will separate from one another. The first stage will make its way back to our drone ship, and the second stage will continue its journey with second engine startup, or SES-1. During this event, the single Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage will light up and propel the second stage along with the Starlink satellites into orbit. And then shortly after SES-1, we'll have the fairing halves deploy and expose our Starlink satellites to the vacuum of space. First of those events is expected to happen uh, in a few seconds here. You go. Stage separation confirmed. All right, so as you just saw and heard, uh, we successfully had main engine cutoff, stage separation, 
the second stage Merlin vacuum engine you see on the right hand side of the screen has successfully started up and we saw the two fairing halves deploy. While the second stage is doing its job, the first stage is coming back home to Earth. That is what you see on the left-hand side of the screen. It needs to execute two burns before uh, its 13th landing attempt on our drone ship. The first burn is called the entry burn. This is a three-engine burn that helps slow down the first stage for hitting the denser parts of the Earth's atmosphere. And then the second burn is called the landing burn. This is a single-engine burn that brings the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land on our drone ship a shortfall of Gravitas. To aid in recovery, we have a couple of tools that the first stage uses. Um, so if you look closely on screen, you're seeing some bursts of gas. That is nitrogen from our attitude control system, and that helps to orient the first stage rocket. And then also on screen, we have a um, view of two of our four hypersonic grid fins. Those are the honeycomb-like structures that you see. Those will swivel, swivel and pivot, and those uh, that helps to steer the first stage back to its targeted landing zone. We also have four landing legs that are stowed at the base of the first stage. Those will deploy during the landing burn, um, and those will help secure uh, the first stage uh, as we uh, land on our drone ship. We still have about two minutes left before the first stage entry burn. Again, the first of two burns for the first stage. For now, we are just enjoying some great views uh, of both the first stage returning back to Earth and the second stage uh, making its way to space, makes its way into orbit. And uh, I just heard the call out that we are in nominal trajectory, so things Again, continuing to go smoothly for today's Starlink mission. For those that are just joining us, we are in the middle of our 49th Starlink mission. You weren't able to catch the liftoff, don't worry. We have two more launches this weekend, so be sure to tune in. About 30 seconds away from the first stage entry burn. We talked a little bit about the engines on our vehicle. The engine that you see on screen is uh, the single Merlin vacuum engine, which is optimized to perform in the vacuum of space. It can produce over 220,000 pounds of thrust in the vacuum of space. The first stage engines are optimized to perform at sea level, and those can produce about 190,000 pounds of thrust. Stage one FDS has saved. Stage one, entry burn, start up. So on screen, we have started the entry burn. This burn is expected to last for about 20 seconds. Earlier, we saw the vehicle on the pad, and the first stage was basically covered in soot. Stage um, one, entry burn, shut this down. This is the reason why. So basically, during the entry and landing burn, uh, the vehicle is flying through its own plume of smoke, and uh, that is what Both builds up the soot. continue to follow nominal trajectories. So landing burn for the first stage is coming up in about a minute, and shortly after the landing burn ends, we're going to be listening for a call-out that's related to the second stage, um, known as SECO. That stands for Second Engine Cutoff, and we'll be shutting off the Merlin vacuum engine that you see on screen, and we'll be waiting for another call-out related to the second stage of a good orbital insertion. Stage one, transonic.
page two is in terminal guidance. Stage one, landing burn. Stage two, FTS has saved. So our landing burn has begun. It's a single engine burn. This is also the period where we'll deploy our landing legs. And here comes our first stage for the 13th time attempting to land on our drone ship. Stage one, landing leg deploy. Stage one, landing And X marks the spot for the 13th time. Okay, That's the first time that we have flown and landed a booster 13 times. Acquisition of signal, Newfoundland. Nominal orbit insertion. Uh, that is a great way to start the mission. And we also just heard the call out that the second stage engine has successfully shut off and, our, and is now in a nominal orbital insertion. With confirmation of both of those, we will confirm deployment of our Starlink satellites via SpaceX's social channels, but we'll also leave the mission audio live on our YouTube channel if you'd like to follow along through payload deploy. Thank you to the Federal Aviation Administration and our current Starlink customers, and of course, to all of our viewers. As mentioned earlier, for those of you interested, interested in, in even more space content, we're not done launching rockets just yet. Stay tuned for the SAR-1 mission scheduled to launch from Vandenberg Space Force Base at 7.20 a.m. Pacific time tomorrow. Uh, launch coverage will begin about 10 minutes before launch, less than 24 hours from now. Thanks, and we'll see you all very soon.